The groundbreaking Australian fossil discovery has rewritten our understanding of the evolution of an entire species. In 1921, a fossil was recovered from a cliff face on the bank of the Murray River in South Australia. It was unrecognised at the time, but was only identified about a decade ago when it was unearthed in a museum's Victoria collection. It led to historic scientific findings being released this week. And joining us with more live now is paleontologist for Monash University and the Natural History Museum in London, Dr James Rule, who's behind this research. James, let's start at the beginning here. Firstly, tell us what we now know about this fossil and what animal it belonged to. Um, so what we know is that this fossil belonged to a nine metre long baleen whale. So baleen whales are the large whales that you particularly think of when you think of a whale. They usually feed on small animals such as krill, and they're usually quite big. But in the past, scientists used to think that whales were quite small, so they only reached around a few metres long. And this whale is particularly important because it is nine metres long, so it was well on its way into becoming an ocean giant. OK, so it sort of upends previous theories about their evolution, essentially. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, so scientists used to think that whales start out quite small. Um, and when we looked at this whale and we looked at the fossil record for the baleen whales across the entire world, what we found was that whenever you got a large whale, it was in the southern hemisphere. And but the reason that scientists previously thought that whales only got big geologically recently within the last few million years is because all those fossils were from the northern hemisphere. So when we start to look at fossils we've got in Australia and South America, we start to see that this pattern doesn't really hold up. And it's actually down in the southern hemisphere where whales first got big. James, I love how paleontologists just throw out, you know, the last few million years. Just how many millions mm. of years are we talking about from when oh. this animal that, that you've found the fossil from lived? Uh, yeah, so this fossil is 19 million years old. And uh, yes, for a paleontologist, a couple of million years isn't actually a long time. Like, you know, fossils have been around for millions upon millions of years, these animals. Uh, so 19 million years was from near the beginning of early baleen whale evolution. So it was just when they were starting out. And what this fossil tells us critically is they started out quite big. Uh, so they didn't get big at the very end of their evolution. They got big towards the beginning. James, is this happening quite a lot, that uh, there's a whole lot of fossils stuck in the back of museums getting dusty and new technological advances are, are really bringing to light so much more about, about what they can offer and what they can tell us? Uh, yes, that's pretty much exactly the case. Um, we're sort of in a new age of discovery when it comes to paleontology. And a lot of fossils um, in museum collections, once you look at them again, are starting to turn out to be quite important, tell a different story um, of the evolution of those animals. And that's especially true of fossils in Australia, New Zealand, and other parts of the Southern Hemisphere. Um, all it takes is one fossil discovery, usually, whether that's out in the field or in a museum drawer, to upend these long-standing theories that scientists have had. We're watching some vision here of, of what looks like cupboards and cupboards full of these sorts of fossils. Is it usually paleontologists who find them or do you generally get sent them from people who have just stumbled on them on their, on their properties, for example? Um, it's a little bit of both. So Frederick Cudmore, the um, person who found this fossil 100 years ago, he wasn't strictly a professional paleontologist, but he was an avid fossil collector. And paleontologists rely on these fossil collectors to discover fossils because there's only, there's very few paleontologists around in museums across the world. And so we can only be in so many places at once, but keen members of the public uh, are critical in help uncovering these new discoveries because without them, most of them will go unnoticed. It's fascinating stuff, Dr. James Rule. I uh, really appreciate you joining us to take us through that latest discovery. Thanks for your time. All right, thank you for having me.